evening to everyone. Welcome. Wednesday night. I'm glad you're here. I didn't know how many we would have um, because of the ranch, people missing, and then others missing, of course. And uh, Robert and Darla, please pray for them. I don't know if anybody has heard, if all of you have heard. Anyway, poor Isaac broke his leg this afternoon. And so he's in the hospital in Murfreesboro. Kind of put cold water on everything for the ranch. So Robert and Darla were planning on being here tonight, but not sure if they've left. Do you know anything at all? Not sure if they've left or not, but anyway, they're driving to Tennessee tonight. And um, so please pray for everybody involved. James called. He was just distraught. I mean, he was really, really upset, and rightfully so. And um, they had to bring the ambulance all the way out there to the ranch. And, of course, you know how that goes. If you've ever watched sporting events, even professional, um, football, basketball, whatever, you know, and when they bring certain mechanical things onto the field or the court, the place just gets hushed. Everybody's praying, and it's just scary. And so they did not know uh, when James called. Uh, he thought it was a little worse than I think what it really is. I don't know. Maybe it is bad more than I think as well. Anyway, broken leg, and uh, that's not good, is it? So please pray for him, for his dad and mom as they travel. And uh, I'm glad you're here. It's a great night to be alive, is it not? And uh, to be in the house of God. I want to read Jude from the book of Jude, just the one chapter in Jude, verse number 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, unto eternal life. Let's pray together. Our precious and kind Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we can come to you in prayer. We thank you for prayer meeting night and that we can gather on this Wednesday night to spend time with you, dear God, and likewise to pray and to fellowship and sing praises to you. And Lord, we love you very much. We thank you for who you are all of the great attributes that are represented within you, and uh, we know there is no other God beside you. And Lord, I thank you for who you are and how you love us and uh, care for us. I do pray for Isaac at this hour and pray that you just uh, encourage him, give him the physical strength he needs, but perhaps more importantly, spiritual strength or emotional strength with his parents as they travel to Tennessee. And I Pray that you put a hedge about them and protect them. Watch over them even through and into the night. Lord, I do pray for all of our group that's there. And may this be such an occasion that would help each and every one of our young people, Isaac and all people involved, to understand how frail life is and, and uh, how that we are dependent upon you, dear God. Each and every day we take for granted our bodies, our walking, our running, and all the things that represent our physical bodies, but we know we are totally dependent upon you and so many things that are, are involved in our life could be snatched away from us in just a moment. I pray, dear God, that there be great spiritual lessons learned uh, at the Bill Rice Ranch. May this be such an occasion that all of the young people will uh, search their hearts as they hear the sermons preached tonight, and I pray that even revival would break out in that place, even because of this one event Encourage everybody, I pray. Bless now this service. Pray that your blessings will be upon us. Come and meet with us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's get our hymn books. Turn to 23. And I'm very mindful of whether it be in relation to Isaac or any one of us at the issues of life. As Christians, there's one thing that we need to be mindful of all the time. The very title of this song, To God Be the Glory great things he hath done. 23. Hymn number 23. Let's all stand, please. Hymn number 23. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded out his life and domain for sin. And open the life gate that all men 
praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh God, through, the, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory. Great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath done, us great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport with Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Well, let's go over our chorus one more time. 209, if you need a book, 209. And uh, Lord willing, Brother James, be back here Sunday. And uh, I believe you'll have a brand new chorus for us for the month of July. His grace is sufficient for me, and His love it's abundant and free. And what joy fills my soul just to know, just to know that His grace is sufficient for. Very good. You may be seated. Once again, welcome all of you here in the auditorium. We're thrilled to see you this night. And likewise, all of those that are out there watching the streaming tonight. Appreciate that. Trust the service will touch your heart. Well, we've got so winning going on tomorrow night. Looks like a beautiful day tomorrow. It is something to smoke. Just amazing, most amazing thing. And uh, I, I said to Debbie, I can't even imagine how many acres of whatever it is, woods, forest, uh, must be destroyed up there in Canada. But every time we get the wind coming out of the north, of course, everything gets hazy and, and uh, smoky. And uh, it's just quite an amazing thing. Uh, three weeks ago, it's already been three weeks ago tonight, was Vacation Bible School. That's crazy too, isn't it? But I remember that Wednesday it was just so horrible, and here we are three weeks later, and still a very hazy, kind of an ugly day as far as that goes. But I say all that to say, tomorrow is supposed to be a beautiful day, so they say, and typically we get the air coming out of Canada, that's the most beautiful summer days. But in this summer, this particular summer, I don't know how tomorrow will be in that regard, but we're going to be here to foyer at 6 o'clock and go out and tell people of our wonderful Savior. Jesus Christ, 6 o'clock tomorrow night there in the foyer. Then we're looking forward to the Lord's Day. I love America. Love to sing the hymns about America and all things, all the emphasis of America. And uh, just looking forward to it so much. Christmas, Easter, patriotic services, they only come along every once in a while. And so I'm glad we come to these days and gives us a reason to... Uh, 
to just give emphasis for that cause. And so we're looking forward to that. Don't forget about the meal out here between the buildings uh, right after church on Sunday. And we will start the Sunday night service 2 o'clock right here in the auditorium. No service, of course, at 6 o'clock on Sunday night. So that's what's right in front of us. And uh, looking forward to the great day on this coming up Lord's Day. Let me remind you about Camp Emmanuel. Bill Rice Ranch is later this year. Typically, we go to the Bill Rice Ranch right after Vacation Bible School. But I say that because I know Brother James, he and I have carried out conversations about Camp Emmanuel. And we feel like Camp Emmanuel got rushed upon us real fast because Bill Rice Ranch is later. And we're only about two weeks away from Camp Emmanuel. So if you have children, grandchildren, next door neighbor, some friend, get them registered for Camp Emmanuel. That's a day camp, 9 to 3 every every day, 9 o'clock in the morning, 3 in the afternoon, right here on our property. I know the children just have a great, great time with that. The registration forms are over there on that little table. Let me encourage you to pick one or two or three up and uh, just keep them with you, perhaps. There'll be somebody that'll cross your path, and uh, you can encourage them to come Camp Emmanuel. It's only $25, very, very cheap for any kind of a camp. And uh, so, anyway, encourage young people to come uh, to that. Ushers, come in and wait on us for the offering for the night. And uh, I think that, uh, boy, oh boy, I uh, forgot to get an envelope there. Brother Eric, can you grab me an envelope and the uh, prayer list? I did sure need a prayer list since I'm the only one up here to talk about that. And I started to go out and get one, uh, over to get one, and somebody started talking to me, and I got sidetracked, lost my concentration. And that's what goes on with people that are young. Thank you very much. All right, let's pray and ask God's blessings. Father, we thank you again that we can be in the house of God this Wednesday night. We pray for all of those that are away from us, and I pray that you give them a blessed night wherever they may be, church tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to give an offering. Bless the offering we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And let's turn to hymn number 28. Hymn number 28 in our books. We'll all stand and sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness together. A couple older songs tonight, but great old songs, and certainly remind us of the greatness of God, how faithful He is. 28, let's sing out with all of our might. Great is Thy Faithfulness O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with me. Thou changest not my compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, 
sun, moon, and stars and their horses above. Joy with all nature in man a full witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin, <clears throat> a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And you may be seated. Got a missionary letter here tonight from Nate Saint. And uh, Nate Saint just works hard at it, always working hard. And uh, we get quite a number of letters from him. He's very faithful in sending out prayer letters. And in fact, in this letter, uh, it refers to the fact that tomorrow, this one just came today at about noontime today. He does it by email. And tomorrow he's going to be sending out another letter and uh, with uh, some information about some things. And he barely, he briefly speaks to them here. Anyway, he talks about and, in fact, apologizes that he had not sent one for a while. Now, for him, uh, if he hasn't sent one every couple of weeks, then, then he's feeling bad about that. Some of the missionaries are not so diligent in that, but he really is. And so he's apologizing for the fact that he has not sent uh, a letter for a a little bit of time, and uh, then he goes on to say, the big news I get to share now is explained more fully in the attached prayer letter that, we will, be that will be mailed out tomorrow. So I already referred to that. After praying, searching, and waiting, God has provided a piece of land uh, near the heart of Kanete. We still can't believe the size of the lot that we should be able to purchase for about $30,000. Another $20,000 will allow us to build at least the basic structure of a building that will be more than adequately meet our needs for the present and near future and allow us and allow for expansion when the need arises. Uh, the letter tomorrow will explain a lot more detail about that, he says, and uh, says please be praying for all the funds and everything in regard to that. In other news... We have finally finished our San Pedro building. I should define finished as the bare minimum um, to mostly weatherproof the building. We have run out of money to do more for right now. But our people are excited to shoulder the responsibility of giving sacrificially so that we can finish this building properly. We hope to be able to install windows and doors on the first floor by September so that we can use this building once winter is over. September, sounds like winter is beginning for us, but uh, once winter is over. Our vehicle situation, and I don't know if you remember, over the last several months, they've just had a uh, just unbelievable amount of, of vehicle problems. So our vehicle situation continues to be more complicated than it should be. Almost four weeks ago, Celso found a mechanic who had a motor for his van and promised to install it in a week 
for the same price that we were about to pay for just a motor, basically the savings of $1,000. Long story short, the van still isn't up, is, is not up and running, although we keep hearing that it would be ready any day now. Celso continues to use our car while his van is in the shop. Our compact SUV won't be up and running for at least another month. Our mechanic discovered that ours was made in the USA while other Honda pilots here in Chile were made in Canada. That's interesting, isn't it? The motors from the Canadian pilots don't work in the US pilots, so the chances of finding a motor in Chile are slim to none. Instead, we are importing one from the U.S. to eBay. Crazy. Yes, parentheses. Crazy, right? It should be here at the end of July. The good news is, even after paying for, even after paying for shipping and import fees, it is cheaper than the Canadian motors available in Chile. When it is fixed, we plan to simply sell it to recover all that we spent on repairing vehicles. <laughs> doesn't give you much optimism, does it? A few weeks ago, we decided to invest in the offerings that were given toward our vehicle and purchase a new to us, new to us, van. After searching and praying, we bought a 2011 Hyundai H1 with less than 100,000 miles. It seats 12 passengers, which means I am currently working on my commercial driver's license. A regular license is only good for up to nine total seats. We, could, we took it to a mechanic to inspect it for us before purchasing it, and he told us, he told, excuse me, and he told me he has never seen a vehicle so well maintained. Long story short, it broke down on our first trip to, to, to Canada almost two weeks ago. Apparently, the radiator was cracked. Fortunately, we were able to prevent any serious damage to the motor. It is now in the shop where our regular mechanic is working to ensure it is on road, it is road, road worthy again. Whew. Everybody has problems, don't they? The church in San Pedro continues to grow, although not so much numerically right now. Our members have been faithful to attend but our number of visitors have, has seriously dropped due to the cold and rainy season. At the same time, the Lord is leading us to add a deacon so I can have some help in the administration of the church functions and so we can prepare someone to maybe one day to be the next pastor of the church. Please pray for wisdom as I teach on the topic and we all pray and seek God's will. On the family front, the girls are enjoying school with Christine. Hannah has become quite the reader, and now we have to work hard to find her enough books, God honor, in parentheses, God honoring, and in English for her to read. Rachel has become a big help uh, entertaining Abby. The boys keep growing, and Abby is starting to be more more started to be mobile, although she isn't quite crawling yet. Anyway, thanks. He says, for your prayers, and a whole lot of pictures uh, that he sent along, and of course you can't see those. He does have a picture of uh, new to us, the van that they purchased. Looks like it's white, and uh, then a picture of a building with a ladder, a couple gentlemen working there, and a picture of his seven-year-old daughter celebrating her birthday, it looks like, and a couple other buildings that are uh, being worked on. Anyway, I know Brother Nate's saying he works diligently in all of his missionary work. Anybody that needs a, uh, a prayer list? Anyone did not get one you came in tonight? Got those? All right, let's take a look at that. Psalm 62, verse 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I feel like I'm wanting to sing a song right now, right? I mean, know that song. You know that song? It's, yeah. yeah that's what, that just makes you want to sing a song right there, doesn't it? All right. 
Then the church requests there, of course, the number one thing, the most important thing, God's power. We're helpless. Whether it be Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, or Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, our church, our church people, we're helpless uh, without God's power. So please pray for that. And, of course, uh, praying, obviously, for the trip back home. Uh, we're surely grateful for Brother Stroop. Brother Stroop, by the way, he works for Brother Dan Hummel, and that's a long story within itself, but he works for Brother Hummel, and they, of course, are involved in, in track producing ministry. And so they have a tractor trailer they drive. He drives, and, and so they'll set up mobile uh, assembly and plants, if you will, at local churches. And so that's a lot of his responsibility. So he had a CDL. He had the ability to be able to drive to Bill Rice Ranch for us. That's how that all came into being. And he's been a great friend. Brother Homo, of course, you know him. And uh, Brother Stroop as well been a great friend. A lot of times they come last hunting season on Sunday. My goodness, I think there might have been either seven or eight. Whole row of men, Brother Stroop and his son and some other guys back there. They were here on a Sunday morning right before, uh, right over the weekend of the first uh, gun season for hunting, deer hunting. Anyway, I'm very grateful that he took the time to drive for us, and please pray for him even as he drives home there on Friday night, then, of course, all the other church requests. And uh, then out of town, Esther Ford, and, of course, we usually just read one of these down through here. Please pray for Shirley Clater as well. Next to the last one down there, Ted Clater is the head man of the case. Some of you saw a picture of Linda. How many saw the picture that Debbie has on her phone? Okay, a few of you. And did anybody recognize her at all? No. It just doesn't look like her, does it? She, uh, of course, she's in the dementia part of this. I don't know. They change the name of these nursing homes so much, I can't keep track of them. So I'm just saying Sycamore because that's how we all knew it, right? But uh, anyway, she's so thin, and, and she's doing well, but just this, this picture Debbie has of her, we were up to see her a couple weeks ago, and uh, my, oh, my, uh, you would, just wouldn't know her. Please pray for Linda. And... Uh, Please pray for Steve Harris, and uh, that's Hazel's son. And Hazel, even in the very last weeks, was so burdened. I preached Hazel's funeral, and I, in the funeral service, just poured my heart out. I mean, I did everything I could to get the gospel out there to him and, and others. In fact, three others, there were three that uh, did get saved that day, but Steve did not apparently, although you never know what's in a person's heart, right? But please continue to pray for him. And I know that he was just such a burden there. Please pray for the Canards and the Magnarellas and the Marie family, three of our missionaries uh, around the world and throughout the country. And uh, then up on the uh, spatial request there, pray for the Doyle family. And uh, Mike will be graduating next week, uh, July 7th. He'll be graduating from boot camp out there at Great Lakes in Chicago, and uh, the family will be traveling out there, Lord willing, next week. Um, they'll be going over and meeting Mike's mother, Pittsburgh, where she lives, and then heading out to Chicago. That's on July 7th. He'll be graduating, so please pray for him and everybody there, and, uh, and then just be praying for Sean Groth. Of course, we already mentioned Mike there, but Sean Groth, and he's just gone into the military lately. And uh, I'd appreciate your prayers for my brother and uh, just so many challenging things there in his life. And he wants to, he wants to preach and minister so badly, uh, but just challenging times, challenging days for him. And, of course, a lot of folks, we just had just gone through a barrage of surgeries uh, within our church family, it's about four or five of those um, that uh, have had surgery, big surgeries. And so pray for all of those. Once again, as I mentioned early on, please pray for Isaac Isley there tonight and uh, the broken leg that he got there at the Bill Rice Ranch today and Robert and Darla as they traveled. And uh, I'm, Brother James called and I, I had to, I was in my car. I had to concentrate with all, for all I was worth. I could hear my voice cracking. I just wanted to cry and cry for everybody involved. Um, it's just sad. That's so sad. And uh, anyway, but everything's all right in my father's house, right? 
And by the grace of God, His grace is sufficient. And I'm just praying. I truly am praying that God will just use it to help everybody, every athlete, everybody, to realize they're not invincible. None of us are, are we? We're all in the hollow of the hand of the Almighty God. And uh, none of us, none of us are king on the hill for sure. But there is a king that watches all of us on the hills and the valleys both for sure. So pray for them. All right. Uh, Eric, can you bring Frank up, please, and lead us in prayer? Precious Father, we can thank you for your safety to come here tonight. And Lord, we come here to praise you in your name. And we thank you for the uh, salvation. We thank you for Jesus who died on the cross for us. Lord, we just thank you for everything you've done and you created this earth and through it, everything to be uh, go to your sight. And Lord, continue to strengthen us as we share the gospel to the people who are up there, they're wandering and lost and have no place to go and do, but we have the hope. You are the hope, Lord. And help us give it the strength and energy and the boldness and compassion to share the gospel to these people. And Lord, just thank you for the commitment of the pastor all these years he uh, preached the gospel and he does it with the Holy Spirit uh, working his heart, and he preached a message for us to understand and meditate it and play it, uh, apply it to our lives. Well, Lord, thank you for this commitment of uh, the, uh, the people here in the congregation tonight. They're dear to, to come here to hear the message, enjoy the message, enjoy the singing, enjoy the praise in your name. You do all the glory, Lord. Lord, just thank you for the ministry here in Manda Baptist Church. <coughs> and just continue to work in the people's heart. Those that are still serving in different areas of ministry, but important to uh, uh, speak to all of our hearts, um, to make the right decision, what we can do involved in the ministry here. And, and Lord, we just uh, had a good time with the vacation Bible school. And the people that did well, and the, uh, the, the children listened, and they understood the, the message and the different things that we preached on. Lord, just uh, continue with uh, at the camp. It's, it's, you know, from every day we work and, and do things, and we just never know what um, can happen. Accident and tragic. and. Lord, we're just all focused on you and just strengthen us and you're the great position for all of us. And just continue with the children down the camp, throughout the camp, and continue safety and, and just continue just praising your name and, and help them understand the message and the lesson that they hear down there throughout the week there. And Lord, just uh, thank you for the bus ministry all these years today. We had to um, travel the bus around for people to come to church and hear the gospel. A great many people have come to the church and a great many of them got saved. As many that we go out in visitations and we run into the people that they remember going, uh, pick up, uh, being picked up on the bus to come to hear the church, Lord. Again, we just thank you for everything you've done for us and, and just uh, watch over and bless the, the Camp Emmanuel coming up next week and then to help these people um, bring their children, their grandchildren, and your friends uh, here and enjoy the camp here, enjoy the message, enjoy the, the Bible study. And Lord, just um, and watch over James and strengthen him. He's going to have basketball camp coming up. There's so much going on here, Lord, because we want to do everything to please and serve you, Lord. 
And Lord, then again, we thank you for everything. We thank you for our salvation and, and the prayer. Everything on the, the prayer list, you hand upon the, the, everything right there as far as your physical, mentally, and um, spiritually, and financial. And you do everything well. And we just have to focus on you and help us uh, to be patient. And you will fight the, uh, the battle for us. And you will open the door for us, and you will close the door, and help us uh, recognize that, and, and just have faith and trust in you, what you have for us to do. And thank you for everything. You do all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just continue before you now, Lord, and we do thank you for the opportunity that we can come out and worship you tonight. Lord, we thank you that your doors are open, Lord, and we still have those freedoms which you have given us, Lord, to come before you and hear from your word and bring our requests and our praises to thee. And Lord, we're just so thankful for this freedom that we have and we continue to pray for this country, for its leadership and all that goes on, Lord, that we might be able to Maintain this freedom, Lord, to, to worship you freely and openly and have the opportunity to share with others, Lord, as, as you've asked us to do and commanded us to do, Lord. And we just praise you for this. And Lord, yet the, the needs are many among us, Lord. We, we pray for uh, Isaac tonight, Lord, and for those ones in the hospital and just pray that things would not be too serious and that they can get them taken care of and fixed up. Pray especially for uh, Robert and Darla as they travel down to Tennessee that <clears throat> Lord, you would help them to focus on the, the drive and, and keep them safe as, as they travel these many miles to get there, Lord, and uh, just be with the entire situation. As Pastor has mentioned, Lord, that you would just work among the camp. Lord, work especially uh, among our group of teens that are down there, Lord, and those others round about, Lord. And Lord, as Pastor also mentioned, Lord, none of us are invincible. Uh, Lord, so many times the sports and the competitions and those things override and uh, we think we can do anything, Lord, but it just takes one small item, Lord, to, to put an end to those things. and. Lord, just help these folks to focus the rest of the week and the teens on those things which are truly important, and that is you and your word and the challenges which will be before them. Lord, we thank you for our missionaries. We thank you for this letter from uh, Nate, Nate Saint, Lord. And again, Lord, it help, helps us to realize that there are people just like us, same kind of problems, same kind of issues. They're just in a far away place and much more difficult to deal with, Lord. And we pray you would meet with their needs and all their vehicle issues. And thank you for the blessing of the land which has been provided for them. And just continue to bless the ministry and help them to, to uh, continue to do their work there as with all our missionaries throughout the world and even here in this country. Lord, we do pray for uh, Shirley Clater, Lord, and her ongoing battles and health issues, Lord. We just pray you'd be with her and meet her needs as well as Linda Cooper and um, Lord, or her situation, be with the family and all that is involved there. And Lord, just let your will be done there and, and guide them in their lives. We think of Steve Harris, Lord, and Hazel's burden for her. And the Lord, just uh, many times witness to, Lord, but yeah, we just pray that you would just open his heart, that he would just see you, Lord, repent of his sin and just turn to you and pray that he'd be saved. Lord, we pray for the uh, the Doyles, Lord, and just pray with them as they go out to Mike's graduation. We thank you that he's done well and for his commitment to this country and for his service, Lord. We just pray that you would stay close to him, that he would stay close to you and be with the family and especially during this time of separ separation, that, Lord, you would be close to them. And uh, again, with Sean Groff, as he's getting into the service, Lord, or other military, 
Lord, we do pray for uh, Pastor Ron Bixler. We pray for his uh, many physical needs, which he has, Lord. We know his desires there to serve you. Lord, we just pray that you'd give him that ability to be able to continue to minister to you as, as you would see fit. Lord, again, we look forward to the services this weekend. Lord, we pray for the patriotic services. We just pray that uh, your hand would be upon them. And Lord, uh, we'd even see people saved. Just uh, bless all those involved, Pastor and uh, Brother James. And uh, we just ask that you would bless the Sunday school, the buses, and all that goes forth, Lord. It might be a good time to uh, remember the greatness of this country was founded on and the freedoms was founded on, Lord, uh, and the desire to worship you. Again, we're thankful for this night. Be with Pastor as he prays. And again, Lord, just be with the Isleys as they travel. Be with the camp people as they finish out the week and drive home. Give them safety there, Lord, and bless in all those things. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Please open your Bibles to the book of Exodus. It started up at Exodus in chapter number 11, or 15, I should say, in verse 11. It started there now a number of weeks. Two weeks ago, we were on talking about the omniscience of our true God, and uh, I got partway through, as so often happens, and it got late, so I just stopped, said I'll do it next week. But the next week was last week, and it was our anniversary, and so... We were down at Brother Jonathan's church last Wednesday night, and so we did not get to pick it back up. But I want to do that tonight for sure. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Exodus 15, 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Oh, I just adore our dear God. I admire him. Everything about him is perfect, isn't it? Not only in the spiritual sense of him being sinless, and he is sinless, but everything else about him is worthy of all admiration and adoration. And you think about the miraculous power and, and, and just how marvelous he is in every sense Sunday night there, we talked about his great love and, and uh, that he loves even me as if I'm his only child. He loves me and he loves you and he, we don't have to stand in line. We talked about the one hymn there Sunday night. We don't have to stand in line to get, to get up there to a place where we can speak to him. He is always available and how marvelous he is in every sense of the word. Over this period of time, we talked in the first week about there were thousands of gods in the Bible and goddesses in the Bible mentioned different ones of those and then the next week we talked about how the true God is eternal Baal is gone Ashtaroth is gone Confucius is gone Stalin and Lenin and Darwin they're all gone and yet our God is still alive and healthy and well still has, is uh, all powerful omnipotent and uh, every attribute he ever had he still possesses that and he's so kindly in those resources to, to help us to be able to go through the earthly life with his uh, interjection of many of those things into our life that we can live a peaceful, joyful, happy life. We talked about the fact that he was omnipotent, all-powerful. Looked at a lot of scriptures about that. Then, as I said two weeks ago, then we got to the omniscient part, meaning that he is all-knowing. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. We're not really dealing with this part of it. Uh, oftentimes we preach about this, how that he knows everything about us, and that's a great thing. Sometimes he may know too much about us and our, our wretched hearts and deceitful hearts and maybe some things that we try to have secret and hide. He knows even that, but we're not dealing with that right now. We're just dealing with the fact that the true God is omniscient. And uh, we looked at a lot of verses about that particularly uh, in relation to the prophecies uh, through Isaiah and uh, Micah. Last week, 
uh, two weeks ago, we looked at Isaiah 7:14, which is one of the verses that's read uh, almost every Christmas. We read that at some point in time, and Isaiah 9, 6, likewise, and each of those being fulfilled, one of them in Matthew 1, 23, and uh, then in Luke chapter 1, verses 31, 32, 33, and then, of course, Micah telling us that uh, prophet Micah tell us that uh, he would be born in Bethlehem, and of course, that was fulfilled there in Luke 2, but how could Micah, how could Isaiah, how could these prophets know any of that? They did not know that. None of us can predict the future, can't predict tomorrow uh, what's going to happen in our lives. And so we know it's the Lord God that knew all things. 700 years before it transpired, he knew that the virgin was going to bring forth a baby. That baby would be the savior of the world. His name was Jesus the Christ. And we had all that prophesied, not by Isaiah. He was only the writer. And uh, not by Micah but God, because the true living God knows all things. Now, another very important part of our uh, wonderful knowledge of the Bible and a wonderful part of our lives as Christians is another prophecy talking about the knowledge that God is all-knowing. And I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 53 for this. Isaiah 53. Again, prophecies. One of the ways we know that the Bible is the inspired word of God is because of fulfilled prophecies. And so we have an Isaiah, other prophets as well, books of the Bible, that great prophet, great prophecies are foretold, future events are foretold, and sure enough, it happened even in detail, just like that God had told these gentlemen it was going to happen. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, and begin reading at verse number 5, Isaiah 53, verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his, her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Oh, great words, great powerful words about a gentleman, a person that was going to die somewhere out in the future. This individual was going to die for the iniquities, the word used there in Isaiah 53, 6, for the iniquities of all of us, all of the world, whatever country one may live in, he died for the iniquities of us all. Now we go over to the Gospel according to Matthew in chapter number 26. Matthew chapter 26, and verse number 63, start with, We'll read a couple of different portions here. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 63. And Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Now let me tell you, almost every human being, I think every human being, of course I'm him. You should know I'm it. We almost all would speak out like that, would we not? But remember, over in Isaiah, it said how he would hold his mouth. He would hold his tongue. He would not speak out. We see that fulfillment there in verse 63, where that uh, even though he was interrogated, asked all these questions about who he was and all of this, but uh, he did not argue. He did not uh, try to defend himself. And he allowed it all to flow as it needed to for the sake of the gospel. It needed to. And he was obedient, of course, to go through all of that. Then down to verse 67. Here in the same chapter, Matthew 26, verse 67. Then they, excuse me, then did they spit in his face and buffeted him. And others smote him with the palms of their hands. Again, 
going back over to Isaiah 53, the very verses there in 5, 6, 7, the very prophecies from those verses that we had just read a moment ago, uh, all of those being fulfilled here in these scriptures of the gospel of, of the death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the torture he went through. As we move on into chapter 27, Matthew chapter 27 and verse number 14. Matthew 27, verse 14. And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Again, he held his tongue, even as it was prophesied. And uh, then let's go on over to verse 27. This is in Matthew 27, over to verse 27. Matthew 27, 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment upon him and led him away to be crucified. All these verses I'm reading here in Matthew 26 and, cha and chapter 26 and chapter 27, all these verses. I'm reading these verses that, that come about 700 years later from Isaiah. The point of the matter is this. Not, we're not discussing about the story itself, but just to make this point that the Almighty God knows everything about everything. He is omniscient. There's nothing hidden from his knowledge. He knows about all things. All prophecies, all prophecies demonstrate that he knows all. Now, by the way, some prophecies, there are some prophecies in Daniel, Daniel that ones would say, well, I don't know about that. And because it has to do with our future, and so we've not walked that trail yet, and we may have questions about some of that, and great discussions about some of that, and analyzations about some of that, maybe some speculations about some of that, who the, the great whore, or all these different words, but let me say this to you clearly, whatever is prophesied in Daniel, or all the other prophets, prophecies of our future, Every last one of them will be accurate because God knows all things. And so we may be confused and we may not be able to analyze and see how it's going to happen, but you can mark it down. This is the word of God and God can never fail. No, God can never lie. He knows all things. And so as he stated it, even if we don't understand it, as he stated it, it is exactly the way it's going to happen because he knows all things, and prophecies demonstrate that. Now, for the remaining time here tonight, I want us just to go through scriptures. I'm not going to discuss the scriptures, well, at least not much. Sometimes I have a tendency to say certain things, but primarily I'm looking just to read scriptures. I want you to turn to, to about seven scriptures here about the true God. That's what we're talking about, the true God, the only God, Yet all the rest of them are gone. There's only one true God, our creator, and likewise our savior. And so he is the one, the, he's the Lord God, Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, and all the others in the Bible. And he's the one we're talking about here and describing, and he's eternal, and he's, omnip he's omnipotent, he's omniscient as well. And so we're going to look at some scriptures in regard to that. Psalms 147. Psalms 147 and verse number 5. Psalms 147, verse 5. And I hope that as I read, you'll read along, but not just read words, but that you will allow the Bible, the Scriptures, the very Word of God, tell you how great our God is, how that he is the true God. And in this particular instance, omniscient. 
Psalms 147, verse 5. Great is our Lord and of great power. Now, we're not even talking about that aspect tonight. But, the, but great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. No ending. His understanding, his understanding about math is infinite. His understanding about history is infinite. His understanding about languages is infinite. infinite. All the subjects, every subject, every subject, science, you name it, his, his knowledge is completely for beyond any measured abilities or a description. Let's go over a, or back a few pages to Psalms 139. One thirty-nine, and I want to read six verses here. The first six verses, Psalms one thirty-nine, beginning at verse number one. O Lord, Thou hast searched me, and and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting, and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassed uh, compassed my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all of my ways. For there is, not a, there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Well, those are powerful words about an omniscient God, are they not? Particularly at verse number six, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Oh, that's true uh, of his great knowledge. Let's turn back to Psalms 44. Psalms 44, verse number 20. Psalms 44, verse 20. If we have forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to a strange God, shall not God search us out? For he knoweth the secrets. Ooh. He knoweth the secrets of the heart. Now, again, we're not dealing with the context per se, just the fact that God knows everything. But, oh, we, we must keep in our thought patterns all the time whatever secrets we may have. Perhaps a spouse doesn't know. Perhaps no one knows. But God knows. And you cannot hide those thoughts from God. That's staggering, isn't it? It really is. Let's go over to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 40. Isaiah chapter 40, and verse number 28. Isaiah chapter 40, verse, Isaiah 40, verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. In other words, the understanding of God Almighty is so vast, we have no abilities to even comprehend that. That's what all of that is saying. Let's go back to the New Testament, to Matthew. Matthew chapter number 10. Matthew chapter 10, and actually, I'm going to read one little verse here. There are several verses that really we could read and perhaps should, but uh, I'm just going to read verse 30 because you can equate it, I think, more easily. Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 30, but the very hairs of your head 
are all numbered. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Now, you know, there might be somebody like Mark Ferguson. Maybe that wouldn't be so challenging. Right, Mark? Well, you know what, Mark? Even with you, there's a whole bunch of hair around here, right? Yeah. Man, I'm looking about the building. You know, a lot of you old guys have a lot of hair, actually. A lot of you old guys. Of course, young guys naturally have hair, right? No, truly, though, men or women, look at the women. You've got lots of hair there, beautiful hair. And, and to think what this verse has to say, the very hair uh, of your head, it's all numbered. God knows. God knows all things. He's omniscient. God knows exactly how many hairs are in your head. Now, the scary part for me is this. He knew exactly how many hairs was in my head 48 years ago last Wednesday when we got married. He knew how many hairs were in my head. And now, as he looks at the numbers, they're a whole lot less. That's a little scary. Isn't that, is that not amazing, though? There's no person in this room that can know how many hairs are on your head. But Almighty God knows. What a measurement. What a great standard of his knowledge of all things. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians in chapter number 2. First Corinthians chapter number two and verse 11. First Corinthians chapter two, verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. So we may know some things about man. You may have, we may have learned some things about mankind and the body parts and the makeup of man and all the psychological counseling parts of man. There's all kinds of people out there that have been very educated and learned all kinds of things about mankind. But the latter part of that verse, even so the things of God knoweth. No man. God's knowledge is so deep, there's not an individual that can even get close to figuring out the deep thoughts of the Almighty God. Let me tell you something. You know this. There's some deep thoughts, deep truths, deep principles even found in this book that theologians for the centuries have scrambled trying to figure out, and they still have not. And guess what? They're never going to figure it out. Because the Bible's too deep. God's mind is too deep. His knowledge is too great. He is omniscient. First John chapter number three. First John chapter number three and verse 20. 1 John chapter 3, verse 20. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart. Here it is. God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. I'm not here again tonight to draw the conclusions or the threats or the consequences or the rewards or anything about God knowing all things. I'm just simply here reading scriptures to you as to what the scriptures say. And by the way, I mentioned this, I think, Sunday night. In the writing of the Word of God, God does not write the Bible in defense of himself. This is what he said. So there's no reason to debate or defend 
This is what God said. So why are we even having big discussions about, well, is God really omniscient or is he really omnipotent or is there really only one God? God says who he is. He expects us to automatically believe what we have read and who he is. Because one thing that God cannot do, and that is lie. I sure am glad God cannot lie because I like all these promises that he has given us and the fact that he's all-powerful, that he's eternal, and he's all eternal and has given me eternal life, and he's all-powerful, and, 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 so, and sometimes he allows me to participate in his power and the, when the need's there, and he's all-knowing, and he brings knowledge to my mind. Sometimes when I'm lost and groping, trying to figure out my path, he brings knowledge to my... He allows me to tap into his resources. Isn't that spectacular? He's the only true living God. He's the only one that can do that. And he loves me and he loves you. He's so wonderful, is he not? Just spectacular in every sense of the word. I hope you love him with all of your heart. I hope you get to know him, not just a savior or a creator, but an intimate way that your relationship with him would just be of constant, just continuously in a position where that you feel like he's right there holding your hand every step of the way because that's exactly what he wants, if we will allow him. Let's stay in place. Dear mighty God, dear all-knowing God, you know the sincerity of our hearts or the lack thereof. You know the secret things of our hearts. And Lord, may the Spirit of God pierce our hearts, condemn us, convince us that we need to do things in a way that would be obedient unto thee. Convict us of our sins. Help us to respond in a way that would please you. But we thank you that you're all-knowing because not only do you know the secret sins that may be in our heart, but you also know the sincerity that's in our hearts, and you know the, the sadness that's in our hearts and the sorrow, and you pity us in those times as well. I thank you for who you are and that we have the great honor and the great privilege to come to you in prayer and to know you in a very intimate way. And Lord, it's hard for me to, to grasp that thought when I think of the dignitaries in political worlds or other situations, the dignitaries of this world, and they don't know me and they don't even want to know me, but you're the greatest of all dignitaries, the King of kings, and you've got time for me. Hallelujah and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Now, Lord, I pray that you would do with our hearts even now Help us just to fall in love with you greater than ever before because of your great attributes and who you are. Thank you for giving these, us these scriptures to help us to recognize who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a moment to invite you to the altar. Almighty God, we praise you, honor you, glorify you, and exalt thy name. You are the greatest above all the gods of this universe, and in fact, you're the only one. And we're so privileged to be able to know you in an intimate way. Lord, give each one a good night's sleep, and I pray that you give each one a blessed remaining part of this week. Again, we pray for those at the Bear Rice Ranch that you keep the one, all the other ones safe, but most of all spiritually, even right now, perhaps, They'll be hearing thy word preached in just a few moments as they're on the central time zone. So the church service, just getting ready to start. Lord, music, preaching, use it all in a mighty way tonight. Speak to the young people's hearts and even the adults as well. Do pray for Isaac once again, help him. Robert, Darla, Lord, watch over them. And even others that have been very, very ill. Lord, I pray that you would just heal them. Thank you for allowing Becky to be here tonight and the brand new little baby and Lord, what a wonderful little gift you've allowed not only the ranks to have in their home, but even our church, a brand new little gift here. And we praise you for that. Watch over us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.